Hello everyone, today I'll be doing a solo flawless dungeon, the Spire of the Watcher with Hunter for my subclass. I'll be using Night Stalker. Here are the mods and fragments I'll be using in this video. This is going to be, of course, the dungeon video, so I do like to separate my loadouts in each encounter. I'm going to be a nice person. And I'm going to post all my dim loadouts for each encounter on the description below. For the first encounter, I'll be using Osteo, Aikelos SMG, and Taipan. For my helmet, I'll be using Fire Resistance. For the artifact mod, it is Sharpshooting, not Legacy Ambush. So, my mistake on that. So, make sure you put Sharpshooting, not Legacy Ambush. Next will be Grenade Launcher Ammo Finder with Fire Team Medic. For the gauntlets will be Submachine Gun Loader with Linear Fusion Loader. Or myself for it to last long and Fire Resistance. For my Exotic, the 6 Coyote with Void Damage Resistance, of Dapner, Global Reach, and Temp Resilience. There is an artifact mod where it does triple resilience, but... It is bugged, but I'm not 100% sure after the hotfix for this week. So please do comment below if it is fixed or still bugged. Next, I'll be using Reactive Pulse with Gurney Launcher Holster. With the Arc mod, I'm forced to use so I can have Overshield on Finisher and then 10 Resilience. And the famous Weakened Clear for Grenade Launcher. And Solar Operative so we can get a little boost of damage buff to all enemies including the boss. Alright, so during the Puzzle 1 encounter, I'll be using Wish Ender with the Ikelos SMG and a sword so I can see where I'm going when I'm jumping on the platforms. So for the chest plate, it is basically the same thing, but with just double damage resilience, 10 resilience, and global reach. And then for my exotic, I'll be using stompies. Doesn't really matter what mods you put on stompies, to be honest. Mainly, I'm using stompies so I can jump better on the platforms. Alright, so for the three towers, I'll be using osteo with the truth teller and a sword truth teller is actually very optional the reason why i use truth teller is because i want to blind the hydras because they do get in the way when i am shooting the circuits as a guardian electrician i must make sure everything is accurate right um the armor is the same with six coyote optional exotic by the way for the first boss i'll be using will the horde with the SMG, Ikelos, and with Taipan, Linear Fusion. Now, as you can see here, make sure you put Sharp Shooting, not Legacy Ambush, with Fire Resistance, Grenade Launcher Ammo Finder, with Fire Team Medic. Next, I'll be using Submachine Gun Loader, Linear Fusion Loader, Warm Myself for the Last Longer, Fire with Resilience. Next, of course, the same thing, 6 Coyote with 10 Resilience, Void Damage Resistance, Kukasa Dampener, Glower Reach. Next would be the same for the Legs, Repulse, Reactive Pulse, Grenade Launcher Holster, 10 Resilience, and lastly, Solar Operative and Weakened Clear. During the phase of dealing with the Harpies, I will be switching to a solo bow. This is very optional. You don't have to switch to a bow. I do recommend for console players to just clear all the harpies and the most, the fastest way for me to deal with the harpies is a bow. Once I clear the harpies and then during the DPS phase, I will be switching to a trace rifle. So for the trace rifle, it can be anything. For me, I just picked this just because it was the only option I had. I do recommend for console players to try out using a trace rifle over a fusion rifle. Try it out if you do like it. If not, then you can use a fusion, but I don't really recommend it. Especially if your sensitivity is low to shoot the eyes, then I do recommend to use a trace rifle just to make the DPS to last longer. 
during the DPS phase, I will be switching to Orpheus Rig so I can get the extra tether to deal the DPS with the boss. This is optional, you don't have to do it, but I do recommend, especially if you are underleveled. For the second jumping puzzle with the fans, I am just using Will the Horde, Ikelos SMG, and a sword, Fallen Guillotine. The mods are basically the same thing as the last encounter. For the final boss, I'll be using Will the Horde with the Ikelos SMG. For my heavy, I'm using Hothead, and I'm using the one with explosive light. That way I can get around 25 damage buff to deal DPS with the boss since I am under leveled and the boss is actually 1610. For my helmet, I'll be using fire resistance, kinetic siphon, grenade launcher ammo finder, and fire team medic. The reason why I'm using kinetic siphon is because I am using the build hothead explosive light. Now, if I am not using explosive light on hothead, let's just say I have clown cutters with vulpal weapon on a void rocket or arc rocket, then I wouldn't be using kinetic siphon. I would just put rocket launcher, ammo finder, and make sure you put kinetic siphon if you are using explosive light. If not, just put double rocket launcher ammo finder. Next, I'll be using a Warmind South for it to last longer, Rocket Launcher Loader, Submachine Gun Loader, and 5 Resilience. Next will be the same thing, 10 Resilience, Void Damage Resilience, Concussive Daphne, or Global Reach. Next, I'll be using Grenade Launcher Holster, Reactive Pulse, and 10 Resilience. And then lastly, of course, we can clear since we're using grenade launcher and solo operative. So this is my loadout for the DPS. So I am going to be switching once again with Orpheus Rigs. All right, guys. So for this week, I decided to go for the solo flawless for the hunter. So before I start this video, this is just mainly focusing on getting the emblem Two. I am not a speedrunner, so this won't be an extremely fast run. Three, I don't have bait and switch with triple tap, so I had to use Taipan for the first boss. And four, it was my second time in the boss fight and my first time using the Warbind Cell build. And five, I was having a lot of console aim misses. So now we got that out of the way, we can actually talk about this. So basically during the first section, there's going to be a lot of ads and there's going to be a new mechanic where we need to connect these circuits or in other words, the nodes. So there's going to be these ads, these cyclops and make sure you take all of them down before connecting the nodes. Or these circuits. So basically, we're gonna be learning how to be a guardian electrician. And 95% is basically what you do throughout this dungeon. So once you take down these Cyclops, all four of them, you can spam Osteo and then just lure the Minotaur, which will give you a buff, which lasts 30 seconds. But when you shoot these nodes, you can actually get plus five additional seconds, which you will get the buff where you can shoot all these nodes. And it gives you about, I would say five seconds. So basically for this encounter, we're learning the mechanics of how to be a guardian electrician. So usually I don't shoot all the nodes from the entrance mainly because I don't want the explosive harpies to spawn so I'm trying to do this trick where I connect all of them and then I do the final connection from the electric wiring last so now I am just following the trace mainly and then I'm just going one by one so right now I lost the buff the Arctrician or the electronic electron buff 
which we have to lure this minotaur, which is being so shy. Can you please just walk inside the building so the Cyclops won't shoot me? Mainly because this minotaur is not cooperating. I don't want to go outside. And the reason why is because, well, the more when you do shoot the nodes or the circuits from the wiring connection, since we are electrician, there will be these cyclops that will spawn. So right now I am just going down here and I'm going to connect all these dots or these nodes up here, right? I shoot towards to connect these nodes. And then once I do that, I'm going to go for the last one. So this one is really annoying to connect. This one's a bit complicated. So this part I always do last because this one is really confusing because I get loss of the wiring and it just makes it easier for me to get that part last. So usually I go up towards the door and down and then there'll be one up ahead over here. Once you do that, there should be one from the right side and then that's when you can actually go down and then connect all the four dots. Just double check if you didn't miss any spots. I missed one spot back there, as always. And then you connect all four and you can avoid getting the spawns of the explosive harpies, which they are a nightmare on Hunter. Warlock and Titan, not so much. You can run away from them, but for the Hunter, it is a nightmare. So now I'm going to be switching to my sword. So during this part is when I highly recommend you use Stompies for the Hunter. Also using the sword also helps just to see the view. So you can see all these electric outlets, all this power is not working. The best part about this jumping puzzle is you don't have to be an electrician. That's right. You don't have to be an electrician connect the nodes, the circuits, the yellow wires you actually just have to legit just go on a jumping puzzle and of course when you're using stompies you have to be very very careful and not bounce off especially on the edge for the hunter for the warlock not so much and then for the titan not so much so now we're gonna go up ahead and deal with all these spawns up here. You can see I did forget to use Wish Ender. You don't have to switch to Wish Ender, but I do recommend especially dealing with the Harpies. Well, with the Hydras. So this jumpy puzzle, mainly there will be a spawn of floating Harpies floating away. Just saying, hi, hi Blitz, hi Guardians, what's going on? And they should void or solar. I don't 100% remember at the moment, but make sure you take him down and then the Hydra will go from the left side and he will start shooting void. So what you can do over here is you can just use this wall to take cover and then just take your time dealing with the Hydra. Then you can deal with the Hobgoblin up ahead and then just make your way to the jumping puzzle. Now, like I said, if you are using stompies, you must be very careful. You can also use a sword to see the view of your hunter or your guardian or your titan or your warlock to see, to make sure you are on the platform so you won't bounce off. So make sure you just take down the harpies. And hopefully we can just get done with this puzzle. So for during this part, I would say just use a sword. I mean, mainly for this encounter, you just have to be careful of the platforms 
And as I said before, just use stompies. Please don't be like Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z, having pride and say, Oh, I, I did this with no stompies. All right. No, no, no. Just use stompies. All right. I know for a master version, it would be lock. And of course, highly recommend to just use a sword. But getting the emblem, there is no requirement of even going solo flawless on master version. Just to let everyone know that if anyone's curious of do you get the emblem on master version, no, you don't. Mainly it's just for the normal version, which is why I recommend just to use stompies just to make it easier and less stressful. So mainly, as I said before, just shoot the harpies, make your way, and hopefully nothing bad will happen. Right, hopefully no stompies will bounce you off. And we do have the sword just in case if something goes wrong. But I know for the master version it'll be locked, but as I said, there is no requirement of getting the emblem on master, only normal. So now I'm gonna be switching to my go-to for the tower. So just to let everyone know, it's everyone's recommendation if they want to you can use an smg osteo and you can use another smg if you want to or you can use truth teller now the reason why i'm using truth teller is because i want to blind the hydras so i can have an easier time shooting the circuits or the or shooting the nodes just to connect the wires and to make my way to the teleportation That's the reason why, but as I said before, it is just a recommendation. You don't have to use Truth Teller. It's not a requirement. Any grenade that has blind nades can really help out dealing with the first encounter. Well, the mini encounter of the towers. So just be very careful in a hunter since we are not using stompies. You can accidentally bounce off from your hunter dealing with these jumps so mainly you have to shoot these wires i'm still not used to the dungeon so this is probably my second go so i will say make sure you take down the minotaur so you can get the artifaction artrician buff so basically, we're going to be a guardian electrician. So I like to go on the right side. Everyone's different, by the way. People would like to go on the left side. So mainly, I don't want to deal with the explosive harpies. That's the reason why I'm going to do this method where I connect all the dots except the last one. But the bad thing is without... The bad thing about leaving the hydras alive is that... They can follow you and then they can also distract you and then on console with the flinch it can be a nightmare but that's why i do recommend to use any grenades that can blind them so you can have an easier time to deal with these connections so mainly i am about to lose my buff so right now i am going to use my sword i'm going to blind the minotaur and then this Hydra is bothering me, so I decide to blind him, and then I walk or run for Hunter, and then I just blind the next one. And then I just make my way just to connect the circuits. Mainly I'm just trying to go around since I finally did connect all of them except the last one. I'm just clearing all the ads, which is why I recommend using Osteo. Osteo is just fantastic of dealing with the ads with the hobgoblin. So there is one under here that I always seem to forget all the time. But just make sure you know your surroundings, especially dealing with the Hydra. But as I said before, you can blind them with Truth Teller. So I do apologize. I kind of forgot where the connections are to this wire. But it does look like as a guardian electrician, looks like everything is connected and we got to go to the teleportation. Since now we are at this part, right? During this 
area, we have to clear all the hobgoblins, and then there's gonna be connections. All these, uh, all these wires we have to connect, but we do need a buff for the Minotaur, which is right here. He just wanted to hug me. All right, that's why he hurt me. He was just a little sensitive, a little, a little angry that I didn't give him any hugs. But it's okay. We got the buff, the attrition buff, finally to be a guardian electrician. So now I'm gonna be connecting. The wires, the, the yellow wires, the live, the live wires. So there is one up ahead, which Osteo can actually shoot from far distance since they did buff it. There is also one from the bottom. So as an electrician, I gotta follow these connections of the wires to make sure we can activate the teleportation. There is one from the rough side, and then up over here where there is these electric wires, which we do need to avoid. There is also one up down there. But for the last circuit, we do need to leave it, by the way. So we don't have to spawn the explosive harpies. That's the reason why. And also because I don't want to kill the hydras because I don't want to deal with the harpies. And I don't know what happened there. This minotaur is just being very complicated. So as I said before, these minotaurs are weird, but we do need the buff. So now I'm going to be going turning invisible. Oh, I could blind them if I was... You know, I could just blind him with Truth Teller. So I'm trying to remember the connections and usually it's up here. Now I'm gonna go down and make sure if I connect the wiring. If you do follow this, just make sure you know where the connections are. And I'm noticing there's a pattern. It looks like it's the same pattern. To be honest, almost similar. So once we do connect this, then we should definitely be on our way to the next area. So now I'm just connecting up over here and then going from the left side and then we finally can make it to the final connection. I actually did forget that little corner. So I'm going to blind this Hydra and then I need to get another buff. Once I get the electrician buff, right, and then I can blind these hydras because they're kind of bothering me a bit. If you guys can cool down there for a couple seconds. I was just double checking and yeah, I t like I said, this was my second go for this dungeon. So I definitely was just checking if I connected right. So once I connect those both from the left and the middle view, you can finally activate the two switches and then this is the last teleportation now i'll be really really honest i think the second one's a bit harder than the last one the last one seems to be easier than the second the first that's just my opinion looks like we have to connect these wires allowing an electrical current to travel from one point on the circuit to another so mainly for this area of course, once again, this is the last one where we do need to connect the switches or the circuits from the yellow wiring. Usually there's one up far away, but just be very careful, especially on console with console aim assist and the flinch can be a nightmare. And usually the connections is from up here. And if you just follow through the wires, then you should be good to go. So I was just double checking not to miss any of the switches or the circuits so we can make sure everything goes perfectly fine. So now I'm gonna go for the second area. It's basically been it's basically gonna be the same thing. Mainly I'm just connecting the like, yellow wiring, the opposite and I think for the third tower, the third floor, it's basically the same thing but the opposite. And that's why I feel like for the third floor is easier than the second one. So mainly I lost my buff again. I'm gonna get more of the electrician power and then make sure I connect through these wiring and hopefully we can make this work and finally connect all these electric wiring even though i'm charging it for free for fellow osiris and fellow anna i'm just joking but anyway we finally made it and now we can actually deal with the first encounter the boss omg 
So to get to the boss, you have to go up to the ledge and open the windows. Yes, we actually have to open the windows to check everything is a-okay. You know, as a guardian electrician, we gotta make sure everything is power up. Even the windows for some reason. So make sure you just open the window, activate the window it says. And you must jump over the window, usually I do, for the hunter. And then once you do that, then we'll make it to the boss fight. And guess what's the boss fight? Yes, it's the one from Garden of Salvation, or Salvation, my bad. And it's basically the same mechanics, I would say the mini mechanics. And we have this poor, innocent, defenseless minotaur getting, getting tortured by the mini boss. I mean, isn't it just so adorable? You know, this boss is always angry, so I, I don't blame, I don't blame the boss making this minotaur suffer. So I'm gonna do a time skip here. So this is going to be the first boss, and now we're actually going to be connecting the circuits, or the nodes. To do that, of course, we will have to, we have to kill this minotaur, and we actually need to activate all these switches so we can do the DPS. Yes, I'm not even joking. So mainly for me, everyone's playstyle is different. I like to shoot all the four switches at the top, and first I always go for the wire that requires to hit the switches from the under the bridge. And usually for this part, it just seems easier to do this first because you can get a lot of seconds plus five every time you hit these switches, these circuits. And then you can just make your way to go to the next section. Now the one thing I will say is when you do hit the final switches from the out, from the out of the map, then you're going to spawn these harpies. They usually spawn about three or four. So once you do hit all the switches except one, you must leave one last because I do recommend you take down the harpies before doing your DPS on console. And the reason why I say that, well, I'll tell you more a little bit more about it during the harpy killing phase. But usually I like to go from, move from the left side. Everyone's different. People will go for the right, people go in the middle or just go anywhere they want. But for me, it just seems better if I do this method, especially on Hunter, Warlock, Titan, you know. So what I do over here is I turn invisible or if I was on Arc Strider Hunter, I just keep going and then just do the melee punch to get invisibility with the assassin goal. So. Right now, I'm just trying my best to hit all the switches as much as I can. And then once I do that, then I'm going to deal, clean up, and taking down all the floating harpies you can see over there. They're shooting void. So I'm trying my best to shoot all of them as fast as I can. So once I do that, then we can actually deal with the harpies. So I like to hide under the stairs over here and I'm going to be switching to a bow. What you can do over here is you can shoot the harpies from far distance and then just keep going to platform to platform. Just rotate like a clock. I do recommend to jump on the platforms from far little distance than just going around from that specific spot. The reason why is because the boss can spawn on that spot that's close to I me. Mean, see the wall over there? The boss can spawn there, teleport, by the way. So I just recommend when taking down the harpies, just jump on the little platforms, then hugging the walls is just my recommendation. Or you can take down the harpies under the stairs, which I will show very, very soon of what I'm talking about. So around this area over here, under that stairs, under that platform, you can shoot the harpies. So right now, I am just double checking if I shoot down all the harpies. Once I do, I am going to be switching to my trace rifle. So now I'm just running around like a guardian electrician, I guess. And I'm just making sure all the harpies are taken down. I don't remember how many they do spawn, but probably, probably next time for a better DPS. Then I'll probably count exactly how many harpies I do spawn.
Well, I do recommend using a trace rifle. Now, the problem of using a fusion, which I know someone's going to comment, you need to have your sensitivity up, like 10, uh, maybe, maybe 8 or 7. But it is extremely different of how the fusion rifle works, especially on the sensitivity you have. In PC, you can just spam the fusion. And it's really difficult to use that on fusion. That's just my opinion. And especially with the console aim assist, it is a complete nightmare. Which is why I recommend just to use a trace rifle. It's just better. Especially on console, highly recommend, by the way. Try trace rifle, any trace rifle that you like, by the way. It doesn't really matter too much, to be honest. But I mean, if you do want to use a fusion rifle with sensitivity too, I mean, I wish you the best of luck. I'm just going to warn you that it's not going to turn out as in you're going to use the fusion and you're going to wind up shooting all eight in one go on a two sensitivity on console. I'm just being super honest right now. I do recommend if you are low sensitivity of your game style, of your game play style, use a trace rifle, any trace rifle. So right now, I am just trying to get the buff, and at the same time, I am just trying to get some special ammo, which is why, which is why I recommend to put grenade launcher ammo finder so you can find a lot of special, especially getting to trace rifle much faster. So once all the harpies are taken down with the bow, and I'm going to take down this minotaur so I can get the electrician, or the electrician buff by the way. So when you do take down the Minotaur, then there'll be another spawn of Minotaur's RNG, by the way. Sometimes they don't spawn where the switch is. Sometimes they do. So just be very careful and don't hesitate to use your trace rifle, especially if you have a lot. So now what we're going to do over here is once I get the buff, I am going to shoot the switch or the node, or the circuits. Once I do that, now we're gonna go for the DPS mode. Now, just to let everyone know, I am gonna switch to Rick since I am under-leveled to do DPS with this boss, unfortunately. So, now I am gonna shoot the eyes. Usually, I just shoot all, all out. I don't really do the tap method like Divinity. It didn't seem to work for me, to be honest. I just prefer just to shoot all out. So I use two tethers, of course Will the Horde if, before the tether. And then I just spam Taipan. So right now I'm just trying my best to shoot the boss and my bad. I kind of mess up my DPS a bit. But you know what, it's alright, things happen. Probably the next phase I'll do much better. So now we're going to be starting all over again, by the way. You don't have to use 6 Coyote, you can use a different exotic, anything that you like. But I do recommend, especially if you are under leveled, I do recommend you switch to rigs when doing DPS to the boss. Because the boss's DPS is so short. Too short. And the one thing that really angers me about this is if you want to do massive DPS, especially if you're under leveled, you have to have the raid weapon, the bait and switch with triple tap. And I just think it's a bit unfair. I don't think it's fair, especially for players who don't have the god roll. Now, I did try without triple tap bait and switch. It wasn't worth it. By the way, unless I use Marksman's dodge with Hunter. But it's just too much work. I mean, why do that when you can use Taipan with triple tap? So, I'm just saying that if you don't have bait and switch, I highly recommend to use the artifact helmet mod, the sharp shooting with the combo of Taipan. Alright, highly recommend, especially if you don't have the raid weapon. Alright. Because I know someone's going to constantly, well, actually, Blitz, if you use beat and switch with triple tap, you can do massive damage. I actually did more than that. I'm like, okay, all right, congratulations, all right, but some players don't even have beat and switch at all. 
or they don't even have the weapon at all. So not everyone has the weapon, all right? Even I don't have the god roll, and I have the worst luck of getting right weapons, I'll be honest. I always have, so everyone, if people are if people are new in this channel, you guys know that I always get the worst luck in getting raid weapons. Always the worst luck. I can never get that god roll on those weapons. You know, I never get good luck on it. I kind of give in and say, okay, well, oh well, things happen, you know. Even with grinds, hours and hours, you still can't get the weapon or you can't get the weapon to be crafted. So we're going to be repeating the same method, by the way. Mainly, you want to deal with the harpies. So let's just count. So actually, there's four, by the way. Let's just count. So there's going to be four harpies that we take down. So right now, it's four. So let's actually count how many harpies actually are for each encounter. And then there's five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight. So around eight harpies, and I think it's going to be another four, I'm assuming, by the way. So, so far, eight harpies, and then there's nine, and then ten. And I think there should be two more. Oh, there's eleven. And then twelve. Alright, interesting. So. So each, so when you do shoot all the switches except the last one, it's going to be exactly 12 harpies that will spawn. So, so always remember to take down 12 of the harpies. And you know, it's very new to me, by the way. I didn't know it was 12. You know, usually I just shoot all of them until they're all gone. Since I know the precise number, all right, now it'll be easier for me next time to know how many harpies that do spawn so I don't have to double check and just run around the map and say, okay, is that all the harpies? All right, we're good. So if you guys notice, yes, I did I did switch to my trace rifle. So I know I know people would recommend to just take all the switches down and then don't shoot the harpies. Well, here's the problem on console versus PC. Hey, this is just what my clan and also my friends from PC and console told me. Alright. On console, it is just extremely difficult to do DPS while you leave the harpies alive. Because of the flinch and then the console aim assist of what if the goblins teleport on you while doing DPS or even shooting the eyes. It messes up your DPS, it messes up everything, and then you waste 5 minutes of your life. All right, I'm just being completely honest right now. So I do recommend on console, Xbox, PS4, PS5, just take down the harpies and then of course switch to your weapon or Thunder Crash Titan, you know, and then of course shoot the last node and then make sure you don't let the boss push you. Yes, the boss almost pushed me. I forgot to mention about that. So shoot the eyes as much as you can. Right now I'm just trying to shoot them. And for me, it's just easier using a trace versus a fusion. So right now I'm gonna do three tethers and then I'm gonna switch to my linear. So right now I'm just using my linear tie pawn, by the way, making sure I get the triple tap. So far so good, I'm doing pretty decent amount of DPS. All right, so I'll be really honest, that DPS was way better compared to my first one. But you can see over here that Taipan isn't really so bad. But the thing about this dungeon is you are actually under leveled when doing DPS on the first and the second boss. So I do recommend to be a little high, especially you can do massive, well not massive, well decent amount of damage. All right, so now I'm gonna do a mini time skip. I'm just gonna go to the last phase. Since I'm using Tai Pond, this is gonna take a while. All right, so once I wasted five minutes, so I would say six minutes of my life, now we're gonna do DPS with the... I decided to time skip the last phase because it's basically the same thing. It isn't really anything special. 
I don't want to waste people's time, to be honest. So once again, just make sure you're mid distance, not too far away, not too close, so you can shoot all these eyes pretty accurately. All right, so finally we got rid of the boss and now we're going to go to the mini puzzle fan area. All right, so I did switch to a sword for this one. So now this is going to be the area where, well, it's not really so bad, but we're going to be introduced by red wires. So for this dungeon, we will have to clear ads. And then we have to take down the Minotaur, which we're going to get the Artrician, right? We're going to have the Electrician or Arctrician buff. And we have to shoot these switches, the fire switches to open the door so we can go to the next area. So mainly over here, you can just clear all the ads. Clear all the ads as much as you can so you can have the Minotaur to spawn. During this section, we're gonna be introduced by this new mechanic where we do need to shoot the red wires. Now they do have a time limit you need to shoot the five switches fast, they have a time limit. If you don't shoot all five of them, they will close and then reset. When you do get the buff, you will still have it. And you could just keep stacking the buff over and over if you are missing the five switches. Well, it looks like we're gonna deal with red wires. Usually they're the hot wires common in a 240 volt outlet. But then again, red wires are secondary live wires in a 220 volt circuits from this perspective as a guardian electrician, right? So right now I am gonna shoot the five switches so we could open the entrance, the red wires. So once we do that, now we have to go to the next floor. Right now, I'm just taking advantage of the war mine cell. But as I said, it will reset, but you'll still have your artrician buff. So you don't have to worry about going back up getting going back to take down a minotaur. You still have it. So during this part, everyone's different. This is basically zero hour. I like to use a sword and then look for the white stripes. Now when doing this method, make sure you hug the wool, by the way. And the reason why I say hug the wall because you'll be near the fan. So this is basically what I do. Everyone's different. I like to just hug the wall. It doesn't have to be even the white one, the white stripes. It could be a different one if you don't like that method. Cause basically the white stripes for that area is literally just going down to the floor and skipping the second fan. Now, if you don't want that and you wanna take your time to go to the other, the other wall that doesn't have the black stripes and then you should be able to hug the wall like that and the fans won't touch you. That's why I do recommend to use a sword to hug the wall. It's basically like zero hour. First time when I did the completion for zero hour, I remember I had to use a sword because I was new to it. And of course this dungeon, I'm new to it, so that's why I prefer just to use a sword so I can hug the wall since the hunter can bounce and then the fans can kill you. But it's just a recommendation, I mean of course you can just time the fans like Pit of Hersey-ish. Kind of like that, that's the only thing I can make a reference go you can just hop off once the fan passes but it's a bit risky i don't know if i can recommend players to do that especially for casual players i do recommend just have a sword just do a light swing hug the wall and the fans should not touch you i think that's the best method for getting the solo flawless emblem
but you know it's everyone's opinion so over here I did kind of almost messed up my switches so you can see here it failed and then the nodes reset but even if it resets I could just go again I'll still have my attrition buff you can see over here I still have it you get five seconds additional time or was it three seconds I don't 100% remember So right now I'm just trying to hit the switches. And then we're going to make our way to the fan section. Now this one can be a little tough. I still hug the wall. And that's why I did use a sword. So around this area, just be very careful. So right now I'm just trying to pick which one would be the safest. And I was looking down, by the way. Which one will lead me to the second fan? Because there's one that will lead you all the way to the end, and then there's one that will lead you to the second fan. So here I just hug the wall, and then I decided to just deal with the second fan. Now I was trying to see if I can find the entrance. I saw the exit, and I thought maybe it would be a good idea to go over there. And maybe it wasn't the best idea. I should have went from the right side than the left side. So my mistake on that. Because I actually almost died. You can hear the fan sound and it was extremely scary so right now i was thinking should i go over here or go from the left side from that side you can see there's a little a little platform there from behind me and i should have went for the one behind me i shouldn't went over here you can see here my mistake my bad so Anyway, just be very careful. That's why I do recommend you have a sword. Just do a light swing. You can see there, I did kind of mess up. My hunter did bounce off, which is why I do recommend to just use a sword so you can fix your mistake and not die at the fan. Especially going for the solo flawless emblem. Things can happen. Your hunter can bounce off and it can be horrible, horrible feeling. All that work. And then you go back to orbit. Well, you'd start all over again, not back to orbit like Grandmasters. But basically, you'd start all over again, and it is a horrible feeling. And I don't want that to happen to casual players. So, as I said before, just hug the wall, and you have a sword. And just remember to just do a jump. I wouldn't recommend to do double jump and then hug the wall. And the reason why is because there's fans on the ceiling. I just want to mention that so so you can be very careful and that's why i didn't use stompies on that area too because it's extremely dangerous especially dealing with the fan section so anyway during this part clear the ad and then once you have the minotaur to spawn then hit the switches so usually i like to clear the ads and just be very careful with the explosive ads as well I usually like to shoot the middle first and then go left and right, shoot the left switch, the right switch, and then after that, I just go around circle. Now one thing I forgot to mention, there's just so many things going on, I apologize, is the warmind cells could actually hit the switches, all the nodes, alright? So when you do have the electrician buff and if you put global reach, you can actually shoot these switches, which is really, really cool to do on the boss fight. But sometimes it doesn't work out because you have to shoot the warbind cell on a specific spot, which I did not know. So as I said before, the final boss was my first time. Well, second, it was my second time at the boss fight, but it was my first time doing the warbind cell build. So now we're going to go for the boss fight. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. So now I'm going to call the electric wire switches. Just to make it easier for everyone. I know they're called nodes, but I'm just going to call them switches for now. So this is going to be the phase where we actually have to deal with the final boss, the Riven. Mainly what you want to do over here is you want to take down the two Hydras. 
you will have the final boss chasing you from left and right. And also, I like to mention that the boss can teleport. So, if it does detect you, it will teleport to chase you. Well, slowly walk towards you and then shoot its void. Which is why I do recommend to put void resistance with concussive dampener since the Riven can do splash damage. Now the one thing I'm trying to figure out, I have not, but the artifact mod for the chest plate, the one where you can get resistance on solar arc and void. The last time I tried it out was bugged. I'm not sure if it's bugged now. Hopefully they'll get it fixed. If not, probably next year or 2023. I have not tested out, but if you have tested out, well, just comment below if they did fix the bug or not. If not, then unfortunately you have to go for a void. You have to put your armor into void and then just put void resistance and concussive cause definitely with double void. So I did have the attrition buff and I'm just running away from the explosive harpies since they run pretty fast. Well, they float pretty fast than a hunter, which is, can be, which can be extremely annoying. So right now I'm trying to shoot the five switches. Usually you need to shoot the wires. The five switches. Five switches, by the way. And then the door will open. And this is when we do need to deal with the yellow wires. During usually the circuits. So right now I'm just trying to shoot all of them. And just to let everyone know this was my second time at the boss fight. So I wasn't 100% sure of where all the circuits were or the switches were. Not 100%. This was my first time using the Warmind Cell build. And I kept forgetting that I had a Warmind Cell at times, so I do apologize for that. For this build, I want to do the explosive light, the explosive light build where you stack six orbs for your rocket, so you can do at least around twenty-five percent more damage. So there was runs where I was just farming orbs, so I can get the buff for the rocket. I will time skip that, and I will mention that I'm just farming orbs so right now i am just trying to connect the switches and i was using the worm cell. and the one thing i will mention is you must shoot all the switches from the outer circle and then try to make a worm cell in the middle i did not know that until after three phases of the boss fight. So make sure you shoot all the switches from the outer circle. That way when you shoot the war cell in the circle, in the center, then it will shoot all the switches, which is really hard to shoot, especially when the Wyvern is chasing you and teleporting and then you have these explosive harpies following you, which is really annoying to avoid. Especially when you're trying to run and then they just explode on you or they joke on you. You know, you run away a bit further and then they joke. Like, oh, I'm just joking. And then they don't explode on you, but they still chase you. It's just very weird. So just be very careful with them. Try your best to take them down. You don't want them to... So right now, I was just trying to figure out where is the last switch since the one myself wasn't cooperating with me. So I found it, and then finally, hopefully I found it, we can deal with the boss. So usually this switch, I was trying to see if I can connect it, I found it, by the way. But then I lost the buff. So that's one thing, you will have to know where the switches are. And I was, like I said, this was 
my first solo flawless so i was new to the switches i wasn't 100 percent sure where they are and i thought there was one on the top usually it connects there but it wasn't and then this wyvern was just walking so fast so you can see here that it could be a bit annoying then then once again i had to get the buff because this switch was in a weird awkward spot So yeah, I was trying once again try to use the warm mind cell and it did it did connect these switches from the left side. So right now I'm just trying to find this okay, well let's see if I can use the warm mind cell. So usually on my test run, I usually just get both of the switches. And then I just spam warm mind cell. I just hang around in the middle. And one thing I notice is that when you are about to hit, when you're about to shoot your last switch, you have to have the Wyvern to be in this room. If you don't, then your DPS is bugged out so that means that you have to start all over of shooting all the switches again and it can be a bit frustrating because you have to shoot everything all over again and it could be a nightmare so when you are shooting the last switch by the way you have to make sure the boss is in the room so finally i did hit the switch finally my goodness i was just trying to use the war mind cell build my bad so I am switching to regs and now we're going to do DPS. So my DPS wasn't the best. I am under leveled. And I was trying to do the explosive light method and I forgot. I don't think I gather enough of the explosive light. So when you are using the weakening artifact mod, when you use your grenade launcher, you can reload your rocket. I sometimes kept forgetting I could do that method because I'm just too focused at the boss. So yeah, not the best DPS, but, you know, things happen. And the reason why I didn't get that, you know, decent, because I didn't have explosive light, not so much, but, you know, things happen. So I will probably come back to this. Once I am 1610, I'll probably come back to this dungeon and make, you know, many separate videos, because my goal is just three phase. To be honest, just to make a decent amount of DPS run. But like, as I said before, this was just my first go. So now I'm going to be gathering explosive lights. So I'm going to do a mini time skip, by the way. Just make sure you take down the two hydras. And then everyone's different. You don't have to do this. You, don't, you can just go for clown courage with vulpal weapon. With a rocket, by the way. If you don't have explosive light. For me, I just use explosive light just to get a little bit more damage buff. So I'm going to do a mini time skip for this one. So I got explosive light 5 and decided to just go with it. You can go for explosive light 6, 5. For me, it's just 5. I lost patience, to be honest. So now I'm going to get the electrician buff so I can deal with the 5 switches, the 5 nodes or the circuits so i can open the door when shooting the switches try to jump and run and move a bit the reason why is because sometimes arriving could be in the middle or the explosive harpies can follow you it's just a bit awkward you can see here there's these explosive harpies i'm trying to run away from them but you know hunter jump my gosh extremely extremely annoying to dealt with so i kind of mess up of getting the buff and shooting the doors so i did pull back so if you are on red health things are not working out the explosive harpies are following you the balls teleports and spams void at you and it just it's just not cooperating just pull back and then try again which is what i did over here 
Right now, I'm gonna go for the left side. I'm gonna try to get attrition. Once I get the attrition, I'm gonna open the door. I'm just trying to make the Riven to move to the side. I don't want him to be in the middle because I want to shoot these doors. So usually there's one in the middle, two from the left, two from the right. So right now I'm just jumping, moving, and the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want the explosive harpies to be in my way. So right now they are trying their best to explode on my guardian. My goodness, get away from me. Seriously, these harpies are extremely annoying to dealt with. I really despise them. So now, once again, we do need to connect the yellow wires. All right, so I was trying to connect them. Usually that part, there's always one on the floor and then from the left side. So I was just trying to connect connect one by one the switches. And at the same time, I was trying to do the war mine method. That's why it was taking me a while for this phase. I was trying to do the where you shoot the switches with the war mine cell. I did lose my buff, by the way, so I have to go back once again and then try again. It could be extremely annoying, extremely... You know, a lot of patience, so... As I said before, I was just trying to connect the switches and... It, like, once you know all the nodes... Then this boss fight isn't really so bad. I mean, like I said, this was my second go at the boss fight, so... You know, it's still new to me, so I wasn't 100% sure of where the switches are. And then I was trying to do the War Mind Cell method, and then, as I said before, I found out that you need to have the War Mind Cell in the middle. It will work more efficiently hitting the switches, especially if they're in the inner circle. It just works better. So we did get one switch, so lucky there. Usually it's best to have the war mine cell in the uh, in the middle or near the middle when you shoot all the switches from the outer circle. So right now I am just trying to get the buff since I'm gonna run out. And then just try my best to get the switches. Then the one thing I don't like about this is I hate when both of the switches are on the left side or both are on the right side. It gets a little confusing of where the wires are. Just be really honest. It does happen. So right now I'm just trying to figure out where is it connected. My goodness, these, this is extremely annoying. So I realized in the inner circle, and I was trying to shoot it, but then I was going to lose my buff. So once again, I got to go back and get the artrician buff. Hopefully I can find it. So I know all the switches or the circuits are in the room, the second room. And I'm trying to find a Minotaur, I couldn't find them. I was like, where is he? Are you serious? He was following me while I was invisible? My goodness, this is, it just gets better and better in this run, doesn't it? It just gets perfect. I just really love when you wanted to make it work. I mean, you try to make it work, it works on your test run. But then when you're trying to do your legit run, it just doesn't work out. Like, 100%. So right now, I'm just trying to see where are the switches so I know where the heck am I going. But as I said before, once you know where all them are, this isn't really so bad. But for me, for this video, for my second go, I was just still trying to figure out all the switches. I was trying to do the war mine cell method, but as I said before, you can actually shoot the war mine cells and you can hit the switches. So I was trying to do it again. I was like, okay, let's try it. Does it work? Okay, it works. So I, I figure out it was that switch, and then there's another one from the left side. So there. So once I shoot all the switches, now I'm gonna pull back. I'm gonna do the DPS phase. So usually over here, the Minotaurs, they spawn. Hobgoblins, no they don't. So be aware that the Hobgoblins don't despawn during the DPS phase. Just make sure you shoot the five switches. Switch to your DPS. 
recommended. And I forgot to turn invisible there, so my bad for that. So they will despawn. It's just a bit annoying switching weapons, especially when a Minotaur is just bothering you. So right now I'm just trying to do DPS. And then the weakening's reloading my rocket, which was good, but you know, I'm trying my best. If only I had Clown Codridge, you know, it would make it easier to do better DPS. But anyway, things happen. So once again, I'm gonna go back. Make sure you take down the two Hydras with Will the Horde. There is gonna be remaining adds, Hobgoblins and Harpies. So make sure you take them down before dealing with two hydras and this is also a perfect time to farm orbs now if you are using explosive light i do recommend to farm the orbs you can see here and i am using the kinetic mod where you can get orbs when using a kinetic weapon so now i'm going to be clearing the ads once again and now i'm going to do a mini time skip at the last phase so this is basically the same pattern you just Take down the two Hydras. And of course, farm Explosive Light if you want to, if you do have it. If not, then just go for Clown Cottage with Volvo Weapon or, you know, anything you want. Then once you do that, you shoot the five switches. Then the yellow wires. Alright, so I did a time skip. So what happened my last DPS is... The hobgoblin messed up my DPS, so I wasn't paying attention to the goblin, and then the Riven was walking, and then I couldn't shoot all of my rockets too much, so it was a bit of a nightmare. So yeah, things can happen, and luckily I did not have the boss to bug out, where if you don't have the boss at the room, then he will bug out and then you have all the switches to reset, which is horrible. Absolutely horrendous. So this is going to be the last phase, by the way. So we are definitely going to hit all the switches. Usually the wires, so hopefully it'll be one from the left and one from the right. So there is one... Well, actually, unlucky again. Why am I getting so bad luck in this video? This is horrible. So, I'm seeing that all these harpies are chasing me, and I had to use my super. I mean, I had no choice. I couldn't run away from it. If you guys noticed, I was running away from it, double jumping on Hunter. I couldn't get away from it. They just run so fast. And there was just no way I could have survived that, so I panic and use my super. I didn't want to, but like how how is that how can you avoid that part? I mean you literally saw six of the floating harpies floating, saying hello, 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 and then they, they explode on you. There was just no way I could have survived that. So I had to use my super that part. I mean look at that. Did you see that? It just goes fast. Like how is that even like, it is just extremely annoying to get away from it. Unless I was using Stompies, but, you know. It's just really annoying to deal with them. So now I'm going to be hitting the switches. They're all huddled from the right side, unfortunately. So right now I'm just trying to shoot them. I was I just want to get it done and over it. You know, I was just extremely, extremely annoyed with this. And then the Minotaur is following me, just having bad luck. Great, perfect. Just gets better and better. Now the reason why I didn't take down the Minotaur was the Riven was following me. I can hear it shooting void at me. That's why I didn't go for that Minotaur. I mean, I could have and then just stick around in the second room, but I didn't. I didn't at all. And this boss was about to use this attack on me, which I immediately ran away as fast as I can. So right now I'm trying to get the switches once again. Hopefully nothing bad will happen. And I was just using patience. I was gonna use the war mind cell method, but I just did not have patience. I just wanted to get it done. 
Jesus Christ, I am not having good luck. This Riven is so aggressive. So the more damage you do with the Riven, the more aggressive it starts to get. Right now, I'm just waiting for this Riven to walk in the middle. My goodness. Alright, so now I have to get the buff again. Hopefully, I'll get it this time. But like I said, I apologize. I don't remember all the switches 100%. I forgot. So I was trying to figure out where does this switch go from what I'm seeing it's probably in the inner circle from the left. This Riven was just extremely annoying. And so you can hear, see proof here. Oh, if you do want to go for the Warmind Cell method, you have to shoot all the outer switches from the out circle and then you have to make a Warmind Cell in the middle of the room. That's the only way to go for the fast method to deal with the switches. I mean, if you want to go for the War Mind Cell build. So this is during the phase where I figure out how the War Mind Cell works. So during the beginning of the boss fight, as I said, I was new to it. I wasn't sure how it was going to work. So I was just messing around, seeing if it can work. Then I realized that the War Mind Cell works if you shoot all the circles. And it just works perfectly. You can see there is one outer circle which I need to shoot, by the way. But I lost my buff. Again, I keep losing my buff a lot, if you guys notice. Yes, I know, it's horrible. But don't worry, we'll get this run done. We'll get it done, so my bad for that. Alright, let's try again. Hopefully we'll get the switch. So, once again, it's from the left side. I always seem to miss that spot. And then there should be one from the inner circle, which I should be jumping in the middle quickly instead of focusing on that minotaur, but for some reason I did. My bad for that. Alright, so I was quickly shooting it the switches and then finally we can deal with this boss thank you thank the traveler and the speaker because i really want to drink my green tea right now i extremely want to drink my green tea right now so i'm going to be shooting the five switches and finally we can deal with the boss and then this goblin he, this guy always bothers me every time trying to do my dps Alright, so I'm going to pop a will of the horde and then just shoot both of my tethers. I didn't switch their rigs since his health is very tiny. Anyway, finally defeated the boss. And we got Soul of Flawless. The emblem symbolized I have the certification of a guardian electrician in this game. Finally, I could be so proud of it. Seriously, why are we even talking about this? I mean, this, this dungeon's basically 95% of being a guardian electrician. I'm talking about wires. It's just perfect. Now, just be happy we don't have the green color wires, the black color wires, the gray and white color wires. And then just be very happy, because imagine if we had all those wires. We'll be more confused as ever. Hopefully you guys will get your emblem and congratulations, you are officially certification with the proof, with the emblem, you are the guardian electrician in this dungeon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.